this is nothing like I remember it. How quickly a crown can lose its luster. Not abandoned then. Oi! Visitors! Apologies. We'll show ourselves out. I've only ever seen one man fight like that. And he's long dead. Then perhaps it's time you joined him. The blessing of the Phoenix. It can't be. I was there when you died. whom I addressed. You have naught to fear from us. Founder, it really is you. It is. So wait. We can speak inside. Those who wouldn't bend the knee? We left before the Empire could make examples of us. Though we didn't go far. And we banded together to form the Guardians of the Flame soon after. Alas, there is only so much a handful of aging shields can do against the might of an Empire. But... We've seen to it that their stay has been anything but pleasant. Of late, though, we've had our hands full just trying to keep the Duchy's few remaining bearers out of the Imperial's clutches. The Cullings. We saw what happened in Old Hill. Aye. The foul work of the Black Shields and their mistress. <sighs> you mean my mother? But it doesn't make sense, even knowing what I know about her. Her hatred for bearers was no secret, but she wouldn't have been ignorant of their value to the realm. No offense, my lord, 
But in case you haven't noticed, the Lady Annabella couldn't care less about the realm. She barely even cares for her own home. That much has been plain since the slaughter at Eastpool. And, since granting the Holy Emperor a new heir, her obsession with bearers only seems to have grown. As to why, I don't know. Maybe she can't bear the thought of anyone having the power to challenge her beloved son. Her son. So wait, the Black Shields are broken camp. They march in full force for Buick Bridge. Then so do we. Make ready. This is their main host. If we remove the head, perhaps... Perhaps we can prevent what happened at the docks from happening somewhere else. If I do nothing, then the blood of their next victims will be on my hands. Yours and ours. We too have witnessed the crimes these men who dare call themselves shields have committed in my mother's name. It cannot be allowed to continue. We must put a stop to this madness. We must. So let us go with you. For the good of Rosaria. <laughs> I was hoping you'd say that. Very well. If that is your wish, I would be honored to serve at your side. And we at yours. So, Wade, let us do our duty. With pleasure, my lord. I imagine this endeavor will require more than just our wits. Then let's hope Sir Wade has a good quartermaster. I suppose we owe you our thanks. At least you spared us when you could have just as easily sent us to the mud. We'll show them that the fire in our hearts is not so easily quenched. The Black Shields won't know what hit them. Welcome to what little we have managed to salvage. Of course, my lord. As you wish, my lord. Of course, my lord. Will that be all? What is it you require? May the blessing of the crystals go with you.
We'll keep them from the bridge. Rubber Wade's life depends upon it. Tell us then, Sir Wade. What is your plan? Nothing fancy. You, Lady Jill and I make for Buett Bridge, and provoke the main host at their encampment. Sensing an opportunity to end the Guardians, the Black Shields will call for reinforcements, who will be met from the rear by parties of my brothers hidden throughout the surrounding hills. This will allow us to wage battle on the bridge without fear of being overwhelmed. While the Black Shields have an advantage in numbers, you see, they prefer to fight in small units, which we can use to our advantage. How small exactly? Small enough, now that I have you and Lady Jill for company. <laughs> I doubt I could have done this on my own. But until we arrived, that was your plan. <laughs> you haven't changed a bit. So wait. The bearers from Old Hill have been laid to rest. Very good. Now make ready for battle. As you command. Thank you, Sir Wade. Perhaps now they will find peace. There is but one thing which will grant them peace. Putting an end to the Black Shields. And so we shall. Listen to the Phoenix go with you. How long have you been pursuing the Black Shields? Since they burned their first village. We tracked down the bastards responsible and fed their corpses to Stillwind. Suffice to say, that got their attention. It's been a game of cat and mouse ever since. Ready, go? Faster! Thanks, girl. Look at me sideways. How is the Black Shields? Come along now. We'll find another break. The lucky I didn't have my axe. There they are. On your command, my lord. What is it now? I told you! We bear a message for the Vicerine. From the Guardians of the Flame. Ha! <laughs> you presume to tell us that a pair of filthy vagabonds, a woman and a dog, could guard aught against the might of the Black Shields? Then come! Die along with your flame! For us area! For us area! 
Your petty revolution ends here. On these our swords, we swear. Taking any chances. I can't say I'm flattered. To me, boy. I needed that. Nice try. stand, albeit a misguided one. In taking it, you have but proven our point, that this land is in dire need of cleansing.
I don't see any more. <sighs> Nor do I. The plan worked. It did. It bloody worked. We sent every last one of the rotten bastards straight to the mud! My, uh, Lord. Perhaps this will be enough to stop the Cullings. For the time being, at least. Perhaps. Though I doubt my mother will take this loss well. She'll move swiftly to see her minions' ranks replenished. And then it will all begin again. I often wonder if the nation we once knew is gone for good. Her fields rot. Her people starve. We battle to preserve the flame that was, but for every foe we fell, another springs up in its place. Yet be that as it may, it is still our home. And we must fight for it. As we always have, and always will. For as long as the Firebird's flame burns in our hearts, the Duchy cannot die. And her loyal subjects may dream of a day when the Rosarian standard flies over Rosalith once more. So why he die? Think we should fall back to Port Isolde before the garrison sends reinforcements? A sound strategy, my lord. And how long has my uncle been funding you and your comrades' endeavors? Since the beginning. Lord Byron was the first person I turned to after forming the Guardians. And had I known of this tunnel back then, I wouldn't almost have been hanged by the city guard for trying to sneak over the wall. I suppose a formal request for an audience would have appeared suspicious. And appearances must be maintained. Were the Vice Regency to catch wind of Lord Byron's involvement in our movement, they'd seize his estate and send him to the gallows, where he would be of no use to anyone. And so, though it sickens him to the soul, he plays the part of the loyal Lord, knowing that one wrong move might prove his downfall. It is why he remains ever vigilant. Don't be surprised if he refuses you an audience, especially since you're famously dead. Then I will have to think of a way to prove that I am neither wraith nor wrongdoer. I might have something which could help with the latter. It's the Mark of the Guardians. Display it and those who love Rosaria will know where your loyalties lie. I shall wear it with pride. Be sure that you do. I don't want my men attacking you again. Unless you deserve it. If only Sir Tyler could have been here to see you. Or the Lord Commander. Thank you, Sir Wade. If there is ever anything you need... I know. Go on now, my lord. accommodating do you really think they believe we are who we say we are not a chance all right I guess my uncle believes we're imposters here to rob him and means to string us up himself
Imagine my surprise when I was told my nephew had come to visit. Clive Rosfield died long ago. And for uttering his name here, you shall pay with your tongue! You would mock me as well? It is I, Sir Crandall of Camelot, loyal servant to Her Serene Holiness, Saint Sybil the Unshard. <clears throat> Madhu, thou vile sorcerer, for thy crimes against church and crown, I shall have thy head. Curse thee, infectious flax wench. E even in death, must thou plague me still? Very well. I shall open the gates of hell, that thou might see thy charge once more. Bravo, uncle. You're still the finest matter in the twins. Oh, oh, Clive, my dear boy, it's really you. <laughs> you always were fond of that scene from the Saint in the Sanctuary. Never did let me play Sir Crandall. <laughs> I have a favor to ask, Uncle Byron. Rutherford, inform the kitchens. There'll be guests. We dine immediately. But, Uncle... You can't very well regale me with the tale of your miraculous preservation on an empty stomach. Sit. Uh, see that you use the good plates, Rutherford. So you arrived late to one of her cullings, did you? Since becoming Viserine, Annabella has been a constant thorn in Rosaria's side, but these atrocities are a new low. Something has changed. Quite what, I don't know, but the woman we knew is gone, 
And a monster sits in her place. A monster? For better or worse, I've been charged with governing this town, and thus must maintain the illusion of obedience. That's all I can do to aid Wade and his merry band of revolutionaries. So he's told us. You have risked much for Rosaria. Our nation will be forever in your debt. It has been twenty years, Clive. The nation your father and your forefathers fought to defend is no more. Perhaps it would be otherwise had I the courage of my brother. Right, if it's a ship you require, a ship you shall have. I have a galley in port, but recently relieved of her cargo. She can be outfitted for the voyage in a matter of weeks. So you believe us, then? About everything? Believe you? Ha! Only a fool would believe even half of the things you claim. But until tonight, only a fool would have believed my nephew still lived. And besides, I have it on good authority that Clive is telling the truth. Whose authority? On your own, of course. You've always been a terrible liar. Is that true? It's not untrue. Let's say no more about it, eh? It wouldn't do to linger on my nephew's greatest failing. The one thing I cannot believe, though, is all this about you being Sid. You were always such a good boy, but now you're quite the outlaw. Which, if I'm not mistaken, would make me an outlaw's uncle! <laughs> right then, who shall we pillage first? Rutherford, fetch me my cutlass. This will be fun. She's a fine ship, isn't she? Once outfitted, she'll bear us across the boiling sea to Drustinus in the space of three days. Something on your mind? Monsters. When I served the Iron Kingdom, I, I did so because I saw no other choice. Because once they learned that the Lash would not move me, they turned it on those who could. And so I became their puppet. I let them pull my strings, telling myself it was not my hand that swung the sword, but another's. I removed myself from the truth so I wouldn't feel the pain it caused. And before I knew it, I no longer felt anything, anything at all. had become a monster. Jill. I don't want to be a monster, Clive. Do you understand? I want to choose a different path, a better path. 
to live on my own terms. But before I can do that, I need to come to terms with my past. And when you do, I'll be standing there with you, just as you stood with me. Thank you, Clive. I must atone for my sins. Only then, when it's done, will the monster cease to be. Just promise me that you won't die with it. Now, let's get some sleep. The journey back to Benamir is long, and there is much to tell the others. Founder knows what awaits us in the Iron Kingdom, but Vivian can probably make an educated guess. Maeve over there is the best thing to happen to Hideaway since, um, uh, since, well, ever. <laughs> she's, she's got a smile like sunshine, and, and she can pull an ale like no other. <laughs> Take you for a scholarly van. Oh, this? Well, it's Valisthea, a culinary pilgrimage. I borrowed it from old tomes. Seems there's no creature in the realm so foul it can't be cooked up into something delicious. <laughs> Think I'll stick to the unfoul ones, thanks. Oh, where's your sense of adventure, Sid? Honestly, one glance at these recipes, and even you would trade in your sword for a butcher's cleaver. From spit roasts to sweetmeats, this book has them all. <sighs> what I wouldn't give to bring these recipes to life. If it's my blessing you're hoping for, then by all means. Well, I'm no hunter, Sid. The first ton of worm I came across would be the death of me. But you're made of sterner stuff. Would you help me resurrect one of these recipes? Something tells me you won't be taking no for an answer. Fine. I'll help. Fantastic! Thank you. So... Dare I ask what's on the menu? Uh, Chancer's Stew. It was once a favourite among the Gormans of Oriflam, if the author is to be believed. Though Molly's never heard of it. The only problem is that while the recipe is extremely detailed in most respects, it's infuriatingly cryptic as to the main ingredient. A beast, no doubt. Most likely something that would make easy work of a simple cook with more broth than brawn, but... Unwanted violets. I've no idea what they might be. Does the book say anything else? Well, only that the sweetest violets sprout atop the bed of roses. Roses? Rosaria, perhaps? One of the butchers in Martha's Rest might know something. 
I'll ask next time I'm there. A sea voyage this time, is it? I can lend you an oil skin if you're looking to keep the salt off your back. Typical nobles, cowering behind their walls rather than joining the fight. A part of me thought Drake's head might be the last crystal we ever cracked. But I'm glad I was wrong. Guardians of the Flame. There are new billets they really never heard about us, day. I expect. And not enough swords to see to them. Clive! Oh, am I glad to see you? Is something wrong? It's Blackthorn. He ain't himself. And if I'm honest, he ain't been for a while. Look, normally it only takes a couple of drinks to perk him back up, but not this time. Something's getting him down. And whatever it is, he ain't telling. It's like he's lost his spark, you know? He's barely got enough fire in his belly to get the ump about stuff. But I'm thinking he might if we both bent his ear, because he respects you, innit? So, what do you say? Fine. If you think it will help. I knew you'd understand. But if he doesn't want to talk, we let him be. He'll open up when he's ready. All right. Now, he'll only smell a rat if we both turn up at once. So, I'll go first, and you can meet us at the forge. Wait a bit, then head over when you're ready. Welcome to the Patron's Whisper. Come to claim your just desserts. All yours. All done? Fancy a look at the list, do you? Here you go. Always something in there. First August, and now you. What are you pair up to? What's it got to do with me? August was worried that something had been weighing on your mind. I thought you might want to talk about it. <laughs> 
did you now? I told you not to stick your nose in my business. What'd you go and do? Clive just wants to help, innit? What's so bad about that? Talk to him. You never know, you might feel better for getting it all out in the open. Please, mate. I'm worried about you. <sighs> Phil shut you up. It's nothing, really. Stupid. Not the sort of thing you bother people about. Why don't you tell us all the same? Karen and I have an arrangement. I keep an eye on Goots, and she shows me what the competition's up to. Interesting arms and armor, things like that. Anyway, the other day, she shows me a cuirass she's come by. Masterpiece of level work. Light, supple, and tougher than it had any right to be. <sighs> Made my stuff look like every clumsy shit. I should have brought the bastard thing there and then just to study it, but I was too proud. And now every time I reach for my hammer, I'm reminded that I'm not the craftsman I thought I was. There. You happy? You got what you came for. Now piss off. All right. We're going. I always thought of old Blackthorn as a bit of a force of nature. Like a storm cloud full of ale. Didn't think anything could rattle him. Least of all, a stupid piece of leather. Blackthorn's always taken pride in his craft. Questioning it means questioning himself. Something tells me this is only going to get worse. If he has doubts, it will affect his work, which will only add to his problems. We need to nip this in the bud. I couldn't agree more. He said he should have bought that cuirass. Perhaps we should track it down for him. Assuming you're happy to help, that is. Too bloody right I am. Glad to hear it. First things first, then. We need to speak to Karen. That monster's taken quite a liking to Lady Karen. What can I get you, Sid? Thirsty, are ya? Sid, have you ever thought about trying the wine? It ain't half as sour as that swill, and it'll get you tippled twice as fast. Speaking of which... You know that friend of yours over in Lost Wing? What's his name? Kenton? Quinn? Quinston? Anyway, the red from his vineyards is some of the finest in storm, which is why it's worth an emperor's ransom, and harder to come by than a cup of Grieger's tears. Have you ever wondered why that might be? Cause I heard it's down to the fact that he buries the bodies of anyone who crosses him under the trellises so the vines can soak up their blood. That can't be true, can it? Can... what? <laughs> you weren't even listening! Of course I was. That was... very interesting. Oh, you're not leaving already, are you? Karen, do you have a moment? Blackthorn mentioned that you'd recently come by a leather cuirass. An exquisite example of the craft, from what he told us. And he ain't been himself since he saw it. So we thought we'd buy it for him. Sorry, sold it already. Didn't think Blackthorn cared for it the way he turned his nose up. But it were nicely put together, that's for certain. Even if the bloke who made it is a bit of an odd one. Happened across him on my travels. Makes all his stuff to order, but the fella who commissioned it refused to pay. I didn't like the colour of some it. So I took it off his hands for a fair price. You don't know where we might find him, do you? Like I said, he's a bit of an odd one. Doesn't even have a workshop. He don't trust hunters, neither, which means he spends as much time out tracking beasties as he does working their hides. I see. 
He did tell me something, though. Apparently, his next commission is for a set of griffin hide greaves. Here, there's a griffin on the hump board. The curse breakers were placing bets on who'd bag it. Now, where the bleeding hell was excited? Somewhere in Sambrek, maybe? Care Northern, that was it. Thank you, Karen. We'd be lost without you. At least you admit it. So, it sounds like going after that griffin might be the best chance we have of finding our roaming leather worker. I'll leave the hunt into you if you don't mind. While you get on with that, I'll ask around the markets. See if I can't sniff out who he is and where he's hiding. Good idea. Hopefully one of us will be able to track him down. If that level worker's even half the craftsman Blackthorn says, someone's bound to have heard of him. I'll do a bit of poking around, see if I can't find something out. Good luck in Sambrek, uh, and watch out for that griffin. They're nasty bastards, they are. Back, are you? I always thought I could teach the best of them a thing or two about working with leather. But... I've wasted enough breath talking about it. Be off with you. So, will it be? Anything else? Sing a song of six skill, a bag of Phoenix down. A pigeon from the rear deck, boiled in Molly's brown. Knowledge is yours. I have a few new notes that might interest you. What subject shall we consider today?
Ah! 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 Ah!